Hello there. Human Rights Watch recently released a report on Rwanda titled Join Us or Die. In it, it accuses the government of Rwanda of committing human rights abuses against Rwandans living abroad. In reaction, local writer and activist Gatete Niringawo Ruhumuriza penned an article titled Human Rights Watch, Rwanda's Uninvited Savior. We shall discuss the Human Rights Watch report, Gatete's rebuttal, and the way forward for the government of Rwanda in this week's episode of the Long Form Podcast. Greetings, Yatete. Greetings, Sunny. Thank you so much for joining me this week. It's my pleasure. Good to see you. Yeah, so tell me, what does life look like for a for Gatete views in terms of writing, uh, your legal work, academia? What are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis? So on a day-to-day -day basis, I have clients, mm. individual clients and institutional clients. Yes. In, people come because they have, so because I'm a business lawyer, mainly mm. uh, all day every day okay so i have people who want to transact mm. or to invest so you're not uh what would they call a, a twitter celebrity isn't that a, a uh, influencer no people think that that's actually your job no so this is the thing so the problem is when i because i'm a lawyer mm. i cannot reveal who i do it for mm. i cannot post that on social media but that's my day, right? Mm, mm. And then institutions sometimes ask me to write things on their behalf, to mm. write books, to write reports, mm. to write, to do research on their behalf. Mm. And then in the evenings, I you have a I, bit of time. I you go, okay. and and it's sometimes it takes more than than, than, than a bit of time. So, mm. for example, the, the problem when you publish, you've published before, you know, there's some level of aftercare service. Mm. So when you publish. You have to publish, then you have to post it on social media, and then people have to contact you, mm. and so on. So in the end, it takes half of your time. But, I, but I'm doing okay. I've cut down on my blogging mm. and my writing articles. Yes. Because, you know, I'm 41 years old now. I need to, mm. to grow up. I, I want to <laughs> write bigger things. And yeah. So, on. Mm. so um, obviously, I've started uh, talking. We started by, you know, the intro. It was mentioning the Human Rights uh, Watch report you know, uh, titled uh, Join Us or Die. But before we get into the report itself, I would like to have a, a better sense of what exactly is Human Rights Watch as an organization and what was its uh, relationship with Rwanda pre-1994. So to answer that question, I'll refer to a petition mm. written by 23 Nobel Prize laureates professors of universities, uh, head of big organizations, writing to Human Rights Watch uh, a petition saying, stop your revolving door with the State Department. Mm. Human Rights Watch is the fifth estate of the United States when they, so they have interventions when they, where they can, if they want to influence your, your life, they mm. can influence it militarily, they can bomb you literally. And you mean the US government? The US government mm. can bomb you, they can sanction you. They can ask that your politicians go to the ICC. Or they can tell Human Rights Watch to write a report that says you're a bad person. Mm. So that's one of their weapons that they have. So in ca the categories of tools that they use to, to in exert pressure on any government, they use mm. this is one, another mm. one of their arms that they use. So would it not be... So it kind of seems like you're saying that Human Rights Watch as an organization is what I, I guess a, a para, almost a para-governmental Yeah, it's a device arm. of power of geopolitics. Mm. geopolitics. Mm. So for example, so I'm saying this why, because the, in this petition that I told you, mm. you have perhaps 10, 15 people who worked in Human Rights Watch mm. and then worked in uh, the State Department and then worked mm. in the State Department and then went to work for Human Rights Watch. Mm. They do, they bounce here and there, mm. and then you have people who, while working for Human Rights Watch justifying American policies of rendition, of torture, and saying, mm. yeah, in some cases this is acceptable. No other Human Rights Watch organization would say something like that. But then wouldn't you, I've also uh, read a few reports, and maybe this is just uh, to kind of blind us to who they really are, 
because I've also seen a few reports about the U.S. when Human Rights Watch is saying, you know, uh, the U.S. prison systems are problematic. Uh, some of their uh, black op sites are outside yeah, the realm of human, human rights. rights would report. Mm. The, the Democrats criticize Republicans, Republicans criticize Democrats, the mm. Congress criticizes uh, the CIA, mm. the CIA criticizes the FBI. So it's That's just, a very normal mm. tools of their own thing. In Rwanda, same thing. I mean, we criticize government. We're not really against the government. Sometimes mm. we praise the government. Mm. Uh, that's that's a routine thing. Mm. But mm. you see, uh, Human Rights Watch, for example, will have a conversation like that that say that says they will be specific. They will say this program in the U.S. government is wrong. Mm. This program is wrong. This person is bad. They say Rwanda, the RPF is Kagame. evil. Paul Kagame is evil. Mm. It is not specific. So it's not constructive criticism. I mean, Rwanda signed an MOU with them. Mm. So say, could you please come and mm. criticize us mm. so perhaps we can learn something and improve it. Yeah, but let's go. I, I think we're moving ahead of ourselves. Oh, sorry. But that's fine. Um, so you've kind of told us that Human Rights Watch is not actually a human rights organization, no, but rather... Just another arm. So you, you, if if someone says they are a human rights organization, you say absolutely not. No, not at all. Mm. They don't strive to, to improve the rights. Mm. They don't strive to improve mm. human rights. They are there to, to to enforce American geopolitics and American soft power on mm. the rest mm. of the world. Mm. So I'll be. Obviously, uh, the way Human Rights Watch has been dealing with Rwanda is, is not just something that happened after 1994 in the RPF. Um, or maybe it was. I, it's, that's it's, up to it you. Was. So did it ever exist? Because we know what Rwanda was like pre-1994 in terms of human rights uh, abuses and, and, and rape and all those things, uh, arbitrary detention. We know what our history is. And we know just how much human rights were being uh, uh, trampled on by the Habyarimana government. Was Human Rights Watch, as uh, kids say now, was it, did they treat them with the same, the same energy? Patani, in the pre-94. The only people mm. who think the government of before 94 was bad, mm. Is the people who were in exile, the Tutsi community, mm. who were killed and so on. Mm. Rwanda was a very good student of democracy. The genocide was a democratic exercise. Mm. It was committed by the mass, by the people. Mm. This multipartism, this all parties that had militias and so on. Rwanda scores much, much lower today. Rwanda has never scored on, on, on checklists that are American. So let me go back again in history a little bit. So after the end of the Cold War, there comes what they call the democratization, the era of democratization. Mm. And there's this, uh, uh, um, this uh, author, uh, Fukuyama, um, who writes a book called The End of History and the Last Man. Mm. He says America has won, capitalism has won, democracy has won. The, the history has ended. Uh, no need to, no, thinking is futile. Mm. We just implement this template. Every country that tries to implement, that, that strives to implement that template, including Rwanda, and calls all sorts of, uh, we, we know them, they keep abusing us today. There are all sorts of uh, Belgian and French experts who used to come to Rwanda to devise policies of how Rwanda should run its affairs. That is what a good, uh, you can oppress your, your people all you want, mm. provided that you are, you invite Human Rights Watch to have a headquarters here and to tell you to, to open uh, officially open meetings of the government. Mm. So, 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 you, so, that, that, so, so, so far, as, so long as you are implementing, you are fulfilling the will not of your people, mm. the will of the Western masters that, that de believe they must de they have imperial ambitions, you are a good student. Mm. And so I mean, I never had any problems, no, not at all. So the RPF uh, defeats... RPF is an iconoclast. So, so it defeats the, the genocidal government, 1994, and starts doing things differently. And Im almost immediately, Human Rights Watch is at loggerheads with the Iranian government. Is it because there was something inherently... Uh, uh, 
anti-democratic about the RPF? Okay, so or or mm -hmm. is it because the RPF was inherently a serial human rights abuser? What 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 about it? If we're to go into the the root of it all, what about the RPF so, so really had, got so them? So the genocide starts on this on the on the on the fourth on the, on the seventh of uh, April. Mm -hmm. By the seventh of April, the RPF denounces a genocide. They say there's a genocide happening in Rwanda. Mm. Human Rights Watch waits to, 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 to agree with that. Mm. Waits while the discussions in the US are happening whether should we really call it a genocide, should we not? As soon as the United States have accepted mm. that what is that finally being convinced that what is happening in Rwanda is no longer easy, possible to, to hide, that's what's happening in Rwanda is a genocide. That's when Human Rights Watch also says genocide is happening in Rwanda. Mm. But that's fine, and then Human Rights Watch comes here. After all, they had nothing to criticize the IPF with. IPF had nothing, there was nothing here. But then in the, the, we become, they, they, they want to, to run, like they do in the DRC, they want to run our affairs. You know, the IPF comes here, and most of the people are in internally displaced camps. Mm. And uh, you have plenty, you know, a plethora of NGOs based in Rwanda, and the IPF is keen to move on to get on with the job of mm. running the country. Yes. They say, but we won't do that if the life of the country happens in refugee camps that are mm. run by the UNHCR and Human Rights Watch and blah, 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 and blah, blah. He says, let's take people back to their homes. The angel says, no, we must take care of them. They're like, no, but they're not yours. Mm. They're our people. We, these are the people we came to liberate. These are the people we fought for. You can't keep them in the camps. Mm. They say, no, but these are Hutus. You didn't fight for them. These are your enemies. They say, no don't understand the purpose of the RPF. These are the people we are, these are actual, our actual people. Mm. You misunderstand. So b these NGOs refuse, and the RPF forcefully closes all the camps, put these people out of the job. Out of business. Out of business. They, 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 they did not accept, expect a fledgling, weak... Rubble, rubble, a rubble of uh, young men. Young men? To, to, to dare them, mm. you know? I know Randoms are listening, it's a, it's, a, it's a friend of mine, I can't say his name because everybody would know who he is. I was like, Uzaji Tinyu Muzungu. Uzaji Tinyu Muzungu. I was like, Uzaji Tinyu Muzungu. Uzaji Tinyu Muzungu. I mean, mm. they see these young people mm. who come and they say, no, we want these people to go home it is it's incumbent, incumbent upon us now mm. to take care of them. Yeah. Anyway, they closed down the camps in Rwanda. Now, Human Rights Watch, especially Alison de Forge, who did her studies in Rwanda, mm. who was in contact, who, who was helped by Musha mm. Maria, and so, and so Linda Melvin documents this in, in her book, eh? uh, Intent to Deceive. And then Human Rights Watch start, wants to own the narrative of the genocide. Mm. They want to organize all the international conference. Rwanda organized an international conference, Alison de Forge says you can't inv invite this one, you can't invite that one. Uh, 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 someone does not agree with the RPF, they run to Human Rights Watch mm. to say, oh, the RPF does, you know, uh, do not agree with me, Sbarsenda Shonga, all mm. these other guys, Mungu. they feel that there's Human Rights Watch, some sort of a big brother there. Rwanda say, we didn't come to fight here against the oppression and uh, neocolonialism, so that you can decide to run our lives. Mm. So that's when we, we broke up with them, literally. And so then they go, as I explained in the article, then they, it becomes an open beef. Huh? And then Rwanda, obviously, so once we close the camps in Rwanda, mm. half the people go on the hills as expected. These NGOs encourage most of them to go and join their fellow in the DRC, mm. in Goma. At that time it was Zaire. Zaire, mm. in Mugunga. So you have Rwandans who are here. We're trying to administer the country with them. NGOs are keen to keeping them in a state of vulnerability so they can continue living off of them like parasites. Mm. We shut down that. We send people on their hills. And then the remaining people, these NGOs tell them, if you want any more of our support, you must come with us to, to Congo. Mm. You have two million people in refugee camps in Congo. Very well organized, it's a country. Most of the aid, the Rwandan aid, but I need to do research and find out if some of this 
money we are still paying for it right now, money that was feeding people in Mugunga. So instead of giving money to Rwanda, where the government is new, you have genocide survivors, you have needs, they are putting all the money in the DRC. Of course. Arming genocide perpetrators who are organizing training camps, recruitment, they buy guns with some of this money, they start incursions in Rwanda, killing people. Mm. Human Rights Watch has moved to Congo, and obviously it's writing all sorts of reports, putting pressure on the government of Rwanda to weaken it. Mm. And but I, 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 you say that uh, it, they did all these reports to weaken it. That obviously took quite a lot of effort, both in terms of manpower, uh, financial resources, right? Uh, you, war takes resources, and it seems that they are at war with the government of Rwanda. But why? Rwanda is literally a tiny Central African country, 13 million people today. Uh, very, I guess, inconsequential when you look at the, you know, uh, 7 billion people in the world. What is it about Rwanda that creates almost a sense of madness in the Human Rights Watch, so much so that they can actually end up spending as much effort and resources as they have been doing over the last close to 30 years? But you see, Rwanda is not, would you say that Rwanda, because it's the smallest country in Africa in terms mm. of her size, mm. would you say it's, it has the smallest influence in Africa? But then here's the thing though, today, the Rwanda that we live in today, you know, it has soft power that it's able to project. But why? Hold on. It, that is who we are today. And I could understand Human Rights Watch fighting us now. They foresaw that. No, they uh, foresaw that. Because mm. even if our influence, if our influence mm. was in prayer, so imagine we are the country like Saudi Arabia where all Muslims go for Hajj, right? Mm. So if we, were, we have, a, apparently there's a Virgin Mary who appears. In imagine Kibihon? we were influential mm. in terms of pulling people to, to pray. Mm. Everybody would love that. But we are influential to tell Africans to tell the likes of Human Rights Watch to True. use Go. that words that I didn't use anymore. Mm. And that's the influence we have. That's influence. And by the way, Sunny, listen, uh, as, uh, you know, I, I, a needle can break a big balloon. Or, uh, mm. the influence is a catalyzer. Rwanda is a catalyzer mm. in a sense that is absolutely not in the mm. direction of what Human Rights Watch stands for. Mm. So. So that they foresaw that. Mm. And for example, so Rwanda goes in the DRC, right? Mm. NGOs wield a lot of influence on the African continent. Mm. Rwanda moves into Zaire, shut down Mugunga, putting the, the people who are in Rwanda who are out of jobs, they had gotten jobs, absorbed by the same organizations in Goma now, mm. go to Goma, shut it down. So now you have more than 2 million people, 2 million. European American experts on, uh, on feelings, on mental states, on, on yeah, those are the ones who are working with these guys on, on democratic values in a refugee camp, man. And people are dying on the street, but you know, democracy and human rights and freedom of media and expression, all sorts of experts. Are There's a lot of money to be made. with hazard pay on a daily basis. Mm. Rwanda shuts that down. So the same people are absorbed today. They work for Human Rights Watch, for Amnesty International. For mm. all these to protect journalists, uh, the, the freedom house. Mm. Oh, those the guys they cut their teeth in in in, in, in Goma and, and, in, and now these mm. people Rwanda is their nemesis. Mm. It's the opposite of what they stand for. Mm. It's trying to kill their trash their business. So now that is that. But today uh, now you're asking why Rwanda? Why such a small country with so much energy? You know, I did a, 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 using AI, did a search of how many times did Human Rights Watch uh, mention a country this month mm. and this year. Rwanda is mentioned at least 23 times a month by Human Rights Watch. It's the highest mention on the, in the world. Mm. Rwanda is, the second one is China, is 21 times. This is you can, you can use ChatGPT to do this for you. It's very easy. Mm. I mean, I, I'm not sure about those numbers, but that... We did. If, we run. If, I will send... If it, that is indeed I will send... Uh, after this show, I'll 
tweet the, 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 yes. the sheet. Okay. So, Rwanda is mentioned more than China and India. We're talking 1.5 billion people mm. than Russia, which is at war. Do you understand? Mm. Saudi Arabia, Saudi Turkey. No, no. Saudi Arabia still has death. The DRC. By, by Actually, the funny enough, the DRC. So, the reason they do that, though, mm. it's quite interesting. For me, is I, I congratulate the RPF and Paul Kagame for this. Because if Human Rights Watch is spending all the money they got from the Saudi billionaire who gave them money so they can't write on Saudi Arabia, mm. if they're using all of that on Rwanda, that says quite something about what we're doing. And also, we will go in the report maybe shortly, we have 50, 54 countries in Africa. Some of them are, are not even mentioned by Human Rights Watch mm. in the entire year. Mm. And most of the time, you'll see that some of these countries, Rwanda is sending peacekeeping troops to protect them. Mm. Or to protect their citizens. So them, that's the countries, mm. the, the, the citizens, mm. yes. So Rwanda, is, Rwanda, the country that is criticized, is the one that's providing security for the countries that are praised. Mm. That's, there's, there's a simple deduction from there. Mm. And, and, and it's, it's who said this. It's, uh, if you receive all these praises from organizations that wish evil to the African people and so on, there's something wrong with you. Mm. So yeah, so th that's my broad understanding uh, yeah. with them. So I, I want us to get into now the nitty gritty of this latest, latest report, yeah. uh, where Human Rights Watch accuses the government of Rwanda of silencing its opponents living around the world through intimidation and violence. The report mentions testimony from people living in, Aus in Mozambique, South Africa, Australia, and the US, and then concludes with a call to the international community to call out the Rwandan government. Mm. What is your rebuttal to this report and their call to the international community? So again, I, I like to quote people. So one of the founders of the Human Rights Watch said this, and this is simple. Uh, this is what we've also noticed it is that Human Rights Watch, when they say silencing critics, Rwanda silence critics. Mm. No, no, Rwanda is the critic. By the way, people keep saying that we are silencing opponents. We are the opponents. They are, I'll tell you, let me elaborate on that point. There are things in this country that we stand for and things that we stand against. Mm -hmm. Not every country is like that. Some countries, because for political expediency, they tolerate everything. You can do just about what you want. You can steal all the money. You can uh, sexually harass people. You can uh, take bribes. You can steal government budget. You can take land. You can take people's land. You can, you can do whatever you want for political expediency. Most of these countries are circuses like that. In Rwanda, we don't do that. In Rwanda, there are things that we stand for, and the Constitution is very clear about that, and things that we stand against. The people who human, who human rights calls our opposition have fled because they did things that are unacceptable to us. They are unacceptable to what Rwandans stand for. So, are you saying that there is no transnational repression, there are no phone calls to taxi drivers in Mozambique? My friend. Mm. All I know is that when Rusia Sabagina was arrested here, mm -hmm. they said, they publicized NGOs, including Human Rights Watch, that the man was renditioned. Mm. Dubai, because Dubai doesn't want any problems with anybody, it's an international city. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of Dubai wrote to the United Nations Human Rights Council and sent, said, we have videos of the airport. The man went physically laughing and boarded the plane on his own will, will and peacefully. Mm. There was no violence, no violation. The letter is long letter. The, mm. prime, the Foreign Affairs Minister of Dubai sent to the Human Rights mm. Commission. This was a legal process. In Gavire, what we do in Human Rights Watch regrets Victoire. Victoire. Yeah. When we, whenever we want somebody to investigate somebody who's abroad. Mm. We use internationally recognized mechanisms. We call our sister uh, institutions, the justice system in the US. Rwanda works with the FBI. Rwanda works with the French, uh, the American, the British, the Swedish, everywhere. The Belgians. As is our right as members of the UN uh, General Assembly. 
and these countries respond favorably because they are keen under Interpol to work with us also for in, to prevent international crime, right? So we use measures that are not. In fact, so they are contradicting themselves in the report. In the, they say, in fact, Rwanda uses international systems to repress opponents. Mm. Like, no, but that's an indictment to the entire world. Because if we s op officially send names, it's up to these people to investigate and find if that we're lying. Mm. Do you know everything that prosecuted Ngabire in Rwanda? Mm. Human Rights Watch will never write this for you. It was furnished to the Rwandan justice system by the Dutch justice system. No, they found, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they found a bunch of uh, documents in her computer. Yeah, of course. We, we say, could you please, FB, America, same thing. So, uh, uh, Sabagina, to this day, it's, it's online. Actually, it's, I, if I'm not mistaken, it was Belgium, which actually sent us some documents. For Sabagina. For Rusesa. Belgium did, but also the FBI did find a bank transfer, Western mm. Union, to FDLR. But you see, this is internationally recognized. Mm. I mean, if you did... so, But you see, Human Rights Watch, the, the, basically... Their work, I can, in one word, characterize it as a, a, an, 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 an assault to Rwanda's constitution. What they, what they stand for and the Rwandan constitution is the exact opposite. Why? Because in Rwanda, genocide ideology is a crime. Human rights watch thinks it's, it's good. You know? Mm. Uh, genocide perpetrators are criminals. Human Rights Watch writes uh, letters to courts to prevent them from being extradited to defend them. Mm. Terrorism, FDLR is, is a terrorist organization recognized by the UN. Human Rights Watch uses that. that when they say we have witnesses, we, so on, those are the people they speak to. Mm. So I'm like, hang on, they're exactly uh, the anti-Rwanda. Mm. They're like, what Rwanda stands for, our very existence is... The, 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 the only day we get the clean sheet from Human Rights Watch, if, if, we, if we meet all at the stadium and kill her and do a public uh, collective suicide, that's the only thing that will please them. Because everything that we stand for, they're against. Mm. So what happens is that anybody who, because we have rules in this country, today again, I was uh, commenting on the arrest of our governor of the Eastern, Eastern province. province yeah. This is a war hero, important man, I know him, respect him, wise man, former chief of the police, very important man, but he's being demoted, investigated. No country, man. No country in the world does that. So this man, I know, the way I know him, he's, he's a good man. I think he's going to he's gonna end well. But guys like him, who are not as heroic as he is, who are imposters that we integrated, it's, you know, it's a... RPF no Murjango when you're going a family. Sometimes we integrate people for civil, mm. uh, affirmative actions. Whenever they can't hack it, they run away. They become human rights watchers. Uh, uh, victims key, key or, or the, the speakers. Key, human rights watch will never say that anyone is being. This man we spoke to, but he also was sentenced to five years. For this crime, or he's being, or he uh, was stealing something. Yes, or we have. They will not add that part. Mm. They present him as just a bona fide, you know, good man who's mm. who's who's just persecuted because we don't like because Gasana. Gasana said in the report, right? Gasana Eugene, the former uh, ambassador uh, representative to the UN, and who now is, if I'm not mistaken, now meeting with the president of the DRC oh, uh, frequently. Frequent and, and actually now it would seem to me uh, as an observer uh, being a part and parcel of the armed uh, movement against the government of Rwanda. So he's, he has, so he's political. I don't even mind when people, if you write a report and say these people have political ideas that are different from the RPF. These people oppose Paul Kagame. Therefore, they have the right to be heard. That's fine to me. But uh, what, I'm what I'm surprised about is the crimes that you commit mm. that are silenced. So you, there's a very, 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 the most hilarious case that's happening right now before our eyes is this kid called Baker. It mm. I, I, I prefer not to talk about 
people who, for me, I find of very little consequence. Okay, okay. Uh, so, you'll so, have to forgive Gassana, me. For that, example, that, I get you. Hmm. Gasana, he's being he so he's being accused by a young lady mm. of assault, sexual assault. He's being demoted by the government. The government even offers him, like he does everybody, you know, if you come home, you'll you'll be sentenced, you'll pay for your your, your crimes, and you will be resettled eventually, mm. recycled to the Rwandans. The man chooses to become, to say, I was opposed to the third term in government. He's very unlucky because on the day that this idea of changing the constitution to change to for a third term, the American representative at the UN at the time was uh, Samantha Power. There's a video in which he's abusing poor Samantha Power, explaining how the third term is the best thing that could happen to Rwandans because President Kagame saved his personal life, he's emotional, he almost cries in, in the UN uh, room. Human Rights Watch doesn't pick that up. Just like they, when they talk about Rusi Smagira, they don't pick up the video where he's saying, I call upon young people to take to, up to arms. To I mean, these things are public. It's on YouTube. So, yeah, but so I, the good thing about it is that when I look at these reports, I don't get angry. I observe them and I analyze them. Uh, Coldly, because I've been, Human Rights Watch does not. By the way, Human Rights Watch, unfortunately, and this is so sad, does not have any consequence on Rwanda anymore. One Rwandan stop. So you will see, for example, this is what they do. The, one of the reasons I say it's a branch of the State Department, you'll see that the State Department will copy Human Rights Watch report and post it as mm. country page of, of, of any country in the world. But Human Rights Watch in Rwanda has so, has so, um, in French they say, manger le pain blanc. They, they burn their candle on bo both ends. Can you mm, say that? Mm, mm. That n when Rwanda, if you want information that is unbiased about Rwanda, ask someone else. Mm. Human Rights Watch is no longer a source. Mm. Just like asking Philip Rangens about Rwanda, is no lo nobody does that anymore. I mean, some people still do, but no, I, I but hear what you're saying. I mean, I mean, so if they did, they would do it among themselves. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, I know racist people sit among racist people and crack yeah. racist jokes. Mm. That's right. The problem is when they tell them to the black person. This, are you, do you see what I mean? Mm. So if, if they have their own rooms where they discuss human rights watch, I'm sure they do, and that's why they keep doing this. But it, it does not, they don't confront us towards that anymore. Mm. We have been sufficient, we have gathered sufficient evidence mm. of their bias that it's impossible mm. for their what nonsense to be opposed against us. So I'll give you an example. I mean, the best example is when they published a list of people allegedly killed by soldiers for stealing goats. Mm. That's Report. been a few years. Uh, yeah. but that, they, they, that's, so they took five years before they opened their mouth on us anymore. But so what, did, what happened? So they published this list. It was the quite bizarre activity. Mm. And three days later, uh, six, seven guys, women and men, come and say, by the way, we the people who published in the report. We're not dead. We, we we're quite not here. Posts. We are, I don't know. Mm. I mean, we don't know what to say. <laughs> we, we are alive. Mm. And then they say, and so and so in the report, he didn't die of anything. He was, he was ill. So and so died of old age. So and so is no dead. He's in Uganda. So and so, we never saw. Uh, no, there was never a retraction. Well, retraction is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. But the moment that happened, Human Rights Watch is a joke after mm -hmm. that. So we usually, so there's, this is what they call what I call Tefal analyst. Tefal is this material that they put in. A, it's a French Teflon. Is a, mm. is a they make utensils for cooking. Yeah, something so, that's for a non-stick. Yeah, yeah. Non so it's a non-stick uh, thing. Mm. So, you, so that grease and stuff for food mm. does not stick. These are kind of uh, this. I don't know if it's a European culture or American culture. Mm. I don't know where it comes from, but you cannot tell a lie in a room. Everybody realizes it's a lie. Nobody, when that happens, you find a different room to speak into. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't, you don't come back. 
and do as though nothing happened and speak shamelessly mm -hmm. it is shocking so they are the tefal uh, analysts who, that their previous baggage doesn't seek they mm -hmm. come back and say you see wear a new tie and and come up with new nonsense and you're like but but we know you mm -hmm. yesterday you said this and this you can't speak here anymore you mm -hmm. you have no credibility so yeah so uh just recently as a result of the release report uh, I, I, I saw that members of our parliament are calling upon the Parliamentary Committee on Foreign Affairs, Cooperation and Security to investigate this report and challenge its premise. Beyond a parliamentary inquiry, which is what I think our parliament wants to do now. Now this is you, I'm, I'm trying to tap into your legal mind. What are the legal avenues that Rwandans have to challenge the way Human Rights Watch uh, treats their country. So whether it is uh, Rwandans themselves or our uh, organs of state, um, what can we do? Uh, are we able to sue them? So, and so, yeah. if we are able to sue them, where can we sue them? If we're not able to sue them, why can't we? So. No, well, so first of all, I think it's very narrow uh, what Parliament is doing. So I saw, so I saw the, the, the information from mm -hmm. Parliament. I think it's not a human rights watch issue. It's an issue of, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a national security problem, mm. right? Why For, do you say that? Because many countries have been invaded on, on, on false pretenses. Eh? Uh, mm. Iraq was invaded of alleged uh, weapons of mass destruction, which we never saw. Mm. So these, these things represent a serious uh, national security issue, uh, and, and they undermine uh, national... I mean, we, we, for example, we invest in tourism. Mm. I bet people, after reading that report, of Human Rights Report, they will not come here for tourism. Yeah. Because so, obviously they are calling us so we have murderers and all sorts of uh, things. Now we've invested millions and millions of dollars mm. and pounds in big football teams in Europe for people to come here for tourism, and now you come up with your nonsense that might prevent some of the people to come for tourism, you know? Or people wanted to invest here some money because they want to start a factory of this and that, and after reading this report, they might not do that again. Mm. And people we know we can reach out to, but most some people read this and we don't know. And take them seriously. Yeah. So now, so we have a bigger problem. So I don't think, so we, we have a very strong army. And we have uh, some young people who can still, I can do it, you can do it. We have, we, we have a team of people who can still inform Rwandans. But remember, I, Human Rights Watch will have their report published in The Guardian and in The Washington Post. But, but you're not answering my question. I'm asking... What are our legal recourses? No, are there any? I want to, you, the question was two pronged. So there was the first part was the parliament, what mm -hmm. the parliament is doing. Mm -hmm. So that, I, I just want to exhaust that part saying, mm -hmm. investigating this particular report of Human Rights Watch is not too narrow. Mm -hmm. Because that's a tip of an iceberg. The iceberg mm -hmm. is a whole geopolitical... It's a, it's a global system. No, no, it's, but it's also, we have genocide perpetrators. Remember, after the genocide, perpetrators the senior masterminds of the genocide are airlifted and resettled in Europe and America. They have children, and they also are there. They have a network of undermining Rwanda, the Rwandan project. So if, if the parliament wants to work on this, it has to look, identify NGOs, which it did in the past, identify universities like the universities of, uh, of uh, uh, Antwerp, where Philip Rangens works. I mean, these people are still publishing reports today of how many Tutsis are in the administration in Rwanda. There are universities like that. There are authors like that. There are journalists like that. Do you understand? So mm. it, you, can, you can do a parliament of 300 people, I guess, mm. doing a study of one report that I did in my bedroom or in my office. They have to look at this geopolitical challenge that Rwanda faces 30 years after the genocide mm. against the Tutsi, and how it can meet, be addressed holistically. Because, and then devise policies. So that's the one thing. Now, coming to your second question of whether we can sue them. Again, that's a narrow angle. We could. 
because Singapore used to sue newspapers in the US and make money. And, and because if we start tapping, tapping into their money, they'll think twice before mm. they write nonsense towards us. So pretty much uh, that would be, I guess, defamation. No. Mm. What did Singapore use? Singapore used defamation in particular, mm. Mm. but we can, there's a palette of, uh, of crimes. Mm. We can accuse them of espionage. Can accuse them of terrorism, abating terrorism. Mm. I mean, if these people are promoting a guy who's a terrorist on a list of terrorists, and so as a political, nice, bona fide guy, Human Rights Watch can be added on a list of terrorist uh, sympathizing, funding, mm. and so on. We, have, we can accuse them of genocide uh, ideology. They fund NGOs in Goma like Maisha and, 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 and other NGOs that are calling for the killing of Tutsi in the Congo. Mm. I mean, the crime. I'm a lawyer, I bring you 20 crimes that they commit in one report. Yeah. But you see, when we do that, we have also jurisdictions. Because these institutions have what they call the observer status in, 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 in treaty body institutions. We can sue them there, sue them at the African court. We can sue them at the, at the we can uh, have them removed from the, the Human Rights Council in Geneva. We can undermine their the capacity to operate. But it's not Human Rights Watch. Again, I don't care about this one organization. But maybe what it's we should do... It's a holistic response. But maybe what we should do, like you said, so we, you, you're saying that there, there, are, there are some avenues. Many avenues. But then, you know, there's uh, someone... When you want to eat a feast, mm. you start with one bite. Yeah. So why, for example, don't we first slap them but if you slap them, the Ukubitimga is in this Misega So you, you slap so, them and all the dogs that are so next then to them, they run I, away. What you're saying, it seems, is that there are legal avenues. Uh, and you've also sh showed that maybe there are ways to find relevant courts um, to hear our. But also pleadings. not finding relevant courts. So there's another thing, number mm, three, mm. that I've thought about all my life. We have Africa. Human Rights Watch is a creation, I told you, of the United States. But we can ban Human Rights Watch from coming in Africa if... Remember, a judge in Europe sent an indictment against Rwandan uh, officials. Mm. Bruguier. Bruguier, remember? Mm. And, and Fernando Mereles. Mm. If the prosecutor... Uh, Emable, mm. friend Emable, if Emable did a good case, he launches an indictment against some guys of the, a list of guys of Human Rights Watch, circulates it in Africa. These people are not coming back to Africa. They, will mm. do, they have to do their research in America. Mm. Do you see what I mean? He has the right to do that. So he has what, to substantiate So then why it. haven't? Why, why do you think they haven't? Uh, why? I don't know. I just mm. want them to do it now. Mm -hmm. That or any other... So basically my point is, mm. right? So I, I didn't rehearse this ideas that I'm telling you now. Mm. My point is, the reason they haven't done it is because we have been a government that has been busy trying to lift people out of poverty, mm. trying to solve our own problems that we have. We didn't expect people to come and talk nonsense. We, we, didn't have, we don't have budgets to fight human rights organizations. Mm. A marvelous job is to catch thieves, uh, tax evaders, killers, and people like that. His job is not to sue American NGOs. It's shocking for him when he sees American NGOs getting involved in Rwandan crimes. He's like, what's going on? So basically, it's counterintuitive. I mean, even my job, I'm a human rights, I studied human rights law at university. So I have a master's degree in human rights. The purpose of that is to speak on behalf of people who don't have access to education, access to health care, access to water and sanitation, access to food, employment. That's what I, I should be doing. Mm. I am busy poking holes in a, an American NGO's report. Do you understand how, so, what time wasting so, that so is? So then I think that leads to a very fundamental question. And I, I wrote an, uh, an article uh, last week about it. It's, uh, the fundamental question is, should we even care yes we should that about was what the they questions. what they say because if they if from in my thinking they they become 
a barking dog that is very good at barking. But it's bite. Because I remember a, a few years ago, when I've been, I've been in our ecosystem long enough, our media ecosystem, our political ecosystem, to kind of have seen Human Rights Watch in its heyday vis-a-vis -vis how the government of Rwanda would react to them. This report is probably, they've put out this report, it's been probably the worst in terms of being picked up by international media, being picked up by uh, African media. It's, it's, I don't know either they've become, uh, as, as uh, Ken Roth has, has retired, that the, 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 the fire, no, the, so, the cleverness. So, the, it's, 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 so the quality has always been cheap. But the problem is, now has rather world, become no the world is busy there's a palestine and israel problem there's the world is busy elsewhere so the, the quality was never better ever i mean the, but i feel like i feel <coughs> i was in first year of university mm. i could still poke holes this report like for no, fresh my year percent but what so the quality was never really so but then the, the the quality maybe was not what it was but it what it's but it's impact Yes, that's what I'm saying. Was so the impact is like, I told Al Jazeera, I asked Al Jazeera as, as a friend, I was like, oh wow, this time I'm, I'm impressed you didn't publish, although they did it yesterday, there's a guy who wrote a stupid article. But, so I told them, could you, this time you didn't publicize the Human Rights Watch report. Hmm. He said, man, we have other you think Al Jazeera fry. is interested in what's some guy who's been abducted, abducted or not by, by your government? Hmm. Thousands of people are being beheaded and bombed. So we, we have, so Human Rights Watch has been unfortunate. And they know this. They know that this, this is going to be a flaw. Which is why, by Parliament doing a study on this very report, mm. it gives it even more fuel. Forget this report. Do a study. And by the way, one of the things that I would ask in the coming term, I mean the manifesto, is to study is to study this issue, mm. this geopolitical issue of NGOs that are linked to genocide perpetrators who are still alive and their children. I mean, Sunny, a son of Bagosora can walk into The Guardian today and publish a three-page article. In mm. fact, he can even, some, some British guy is going to write it on his behalf and he's going to sign it and it's going to be published. Mm. You can never be published in the, in the Guardian. A genocide survivor can never be published in the Guardian. My friend Alain Girinshuti, who's a lawyer at uh, Que Social, I keep talking about him. Alain Girinshuti went to La Sorbonne, it's a prestigious university in, in, in France. He wanted, he lived for 10 years in France. He wanted French citizenship. They denied him citizenship because he was VP of Ibuka. Alain has a big panga cut on his hand. He's a genocide survivor. They cut his hand. He can't play basketball. Played with him ping pong because that's the sport he can play. He can't play basketball. They denied him citizenship because he was a member of Ibuka. Ibuka means remember. It's the Association of Genocide Survivors. But all the children of all the genocide perpetrators, including children of Abiyarimana and his wife Agat, head of Akazu, all have French citizenship. From there, what else do you want to deduct, uh, my friend? Well, I don't, if I'm not mistaken, Agat does not have French citizenship. No. They are permanent residents. Yes. Like this. yes. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So it's genocide perpetrators. Do you know why she does it? Because she's indicted by the ICTR. She mm -hmm. was never extradited, by the way. Mm -hmm. But you see, the point I'm making here, every genocide perpetrator, mastermind, who made it to Europe, their children will always forever be Europeans. Mm. Every genocide survivor, they are looked at in hostility. This human rights report says it. It says the Rwandan community abroad is an arm of, uh, of the Rwandan intelligence service. Every Rwandan. Eh? So basically, the Rwandan diaspora all works for the mm. intelligence. So it's encouraging the entire intelligence service all over the world to look with a different eye at every Rwandan citizen who is not officially going around abusing Kagame. Mm. So if you want to live peacefully in France, 
Belgium, America, UK. Not to say, da, 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 da. You have to abuse him. If you post a photo like Happy Independence Day or Happy Liberation Day or Happy Birthday, Mr. President, or, or something nice, you are a spy. Mm. Can, can you imagine the magnitude of that? Yeah. So if the parliament wants to study, that's what they must study. Mm. And the, 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 you know, the dangers of that. Mm. Right. So uh, thank you for that. Um, so earlier this week, uh, when, I, I, when I announced that you'd be joining me on the podcast, uh, I told some of uh, our social media followers to send us questions, questions that they would like me to ask you. So uh, we've, let's say that we've finished that part, the Human Rights Watch uh, report, uh, part. And these are just questions from social media. And they were like, oh, we have Gatete views here. These are the questions we'd like to ask him. So is it, is it OK if I? Absolutely. OK. So uh, someone uh, asked me to ask you, does Gatete still practice human rights law? Yes. Uh, but practicing human rights law, I do advocacy, and by the one of the reasons I started writing because it was the, the cheapest, most cost-effective way yeah. to pr to promote uh, human rights. And I and the lawyer, I and a couple lawyers, we are three lawyers. We started an NGO yeah. called Legal Aid Forum. I'm sure in Kigali everybody knows it, and I don't appear in it so much or whatever, but I know that it has legal aid services. Mm. And everybody, some, every time somebody comes to me and tells me, I would like to, you to represent me in court as a human rights case, I usually refer them to legal aid forum and they, they're very kind. They always take this person and uh, provide them with a lawyer free of charge and, and so on. Mm. So I practice human rights law by advocating on policy. Okay. So question number two. What is the one sustainable solution you think can bring about stability in the DRC? One. Cessation of the Kivu. What do you mean? I mean the Kivu should govern itself. I mean every region in the DRC. People think of the DRC, they, you know, they see these Congolese people making noise on television, but if you, the DRC is, is a sad place. There's, there's Goma, there's Kisangani, Lubumbashi, and Kinshasa, and Matadi, and three others. The rest of the country is empty. People are naked, running in the bush. Diseases. Also, the government has the government of the DRC is clueless about 80% of the population. So if this 80% of the population are managed by village chiefs and militias, and they live in a life of, there's a book by Paul Collier. Uh, it's called the bottom billion. He talks. He says uh, a couple of years ago there was six billion people on the planet, and one billion was advancing, and six billion had been left behind. Now there is seven billion on the planet. Six of them are advancing, and one of them has been left behind. Mm. This is the billion he's talking about. It's places like Afghanistan, like DRC. Now Yuval is even more alarming. In his book, uh, Sapiens, I think it's Sapiens, I can't remember if Sapiens or Modeus, he says if these people are left behind now with this uh, technological leap, mm. it's going to take another cognitive revolution, that's around 30,000 years from now, for them to even wake up. Because you see people, you see places where people don't know, as they don't know water, and clean water mm. that you can have from a tap of electricity. So basically, the DRC has always been, it's considered globally as an extraction, as an El Dorado, like a place where people extract minerals to go and develop the highest technology without caring for the people there. So if you want to have a place where you can actually have an enclave of peace and progress, you have to succeed so you can administer it on your own mm. without anybody else. So anywhere in Congo, it doesn't have to be Kivu, that needs to thrive. It has to succeed. So Katanga. Everyone who Congo as 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 you know, it's a it's, 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 it's a cre creation of uh, King Leopold for his personal enrichment. It's, so it's an, a national a country experiment. It has dramatically failed. There's there's never been the, a country because in political science because I studied also uh, political science at university. 
in political science, to be a country, a state, there are things you must do. You must fulfill. Have an army, you know, territorial integrity, rule of law, uh, institutions, and so on. It doesn't fulfill 60% of the criteria that's needed for you. It's a failed experiment. It needs to stop to exist, in my opinion, so that the people can continue to exist. I, I, I'm a human rights lawyer. Remember, I'm not a state's rights lawyer. I believe you, you, the humans in Congo should th thrive, mm -hmm. have a better livelihood. The humans in Congo, it doesn't have to be the people from Kivu. <coughs> People from everywhere in Congo, they should have a. They deserve better, but they, I don't think within the current political arrangement, they can have better. So that the country have to die, the entity, for the humans to thrive. In my opinion, it's a controversial point, but you know. And with that, <laughs> I uh, thank you so much uh, for joining me this week, uh, Gatete. I really enjoyed this conversation, and uh, hopefully. When something else like this comes about again, you will uh, heed my invitations to the Long Form Podcast. It's always my pleasure, Sunny. Thank you so much, brother. You're welcome.